Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're back with Darren at Green Pro Clean Limited. Um, today I'm having a quick chat about insurance. Most boring thing on earth, but here's the do's and don'ts. Well, not the do's and don'ts, the ins and outs, basically. Um, Angli, Angli Saxon and, uh, well, Angli Saxon asked an hour ago, um, where can I get public liability insurance for a window cleaner? And Ebenezer um, Odebanjo said, Hi again, I've started my business and don't know if I actually need to be insured when all my business owns a cleaning equipment such as window piles, squeegees and cloths and all I'm doing in my neighbours' houses. Right then, so bear with me. Damn hay fever's playing up already. Um, the short version is, in the UK, under UK law, from the second you start a business, whether you're a sole trader, whether you're a um, partnership, whether you're a limited liability company, from the very second you start a, um, a business, you must have public liability insurance. That is the end of it. You have to have it by law. Now, where do I get my insurance from? That's a different question. I get my insurance from a company called Gleaming, my public liability anyway. I get it from Gleaming Insurance, I'll pop a link down below for you. The reason for this is many companies will not insure the actual article you're working on. And what I mean by that is if you're working away on a window up here and you damage that window, that window is not covered on your on your premium, on your public liability insurance. However, if you're working with your pole up here and you bash the Porsche parked on the driveway behind you, well then the Porsche is covered because you weren't cleaning that at the time. But I had an argument when I was um, when I was shopping for insurance quotes once upon a time, and they said to me, oh yeah, yeah, but the cost of a window, well, your, um, what do they call it, your excess will be less than the cost of the window, so, you know, you might as well just pay it out your own pocket because it'd be less than having to pay the excess, is what they were trying to say. So in short, I know I've just got everyone very confused there. So in short, this insurance company was trying to tell me that it would be cheaper in most cases uh, to just pay for the damage of the window out of my own pocket because it would be less than the £250 excess. At which point I explained to them, well, some of the windows I work on run into the thousands and thousands of pounds. Um, literally, old uh, Art Deco windows, big curved windows around the sides of buildings, single pane, um, etc. And you just take a standard pair of patio doors, for example. That's a couple of thousand pounds worth of doors for a start uh, by anybody's standards these days. So for them to tell me that, uh, oh yeah, what I'm working on will be, uh, it would be cheaper to just pay it out of my own pocket than to use my excess. Well, these people were on drugs. So the reason I went to Gleaming is because they actually cover the article you're working on. So if I'm working on some patio doors right here, polishing these and I damage these, they're covered. That's why I use Gleaming. So that's it guys, you have to have public liability insurance from day one, and for me, I get it from Gleaming Insurance. I have, I must state for um, for transparency or whatever, I have never ever ever had to place a claim in my life with them, so you know, I don't know um, how good they are at paying out, but that's who we use. Um, employee liability insurance. From the second you become an employer in the UK, if you're a sole trader and you hire someone, if you're a partnership and you hire someone, you must have employee liability insurance from day one, pure and simple. Here's a bit of a twist for you. When I started Green Pro Clean Limited, well, I was Green Window Cleaner, then I became Green Pro Clean Limited. I was just a one-man band, but I still became a limited company. But as I became a limited company overnight, I went from being um, just me, to being an employee of my own company. So even though I was the only employee, never likely to sue myself, um, I still by law had to have employee liability insurance. Um, I forget where we get it from now, although I do know it was underwritten by Hiscox. Uh, so I hope this helps you out guys. You can go through it and go, oh well yeah, I'm not gonna bother with insurance, I'll risk it for a biscuit, I'm not paying the extra 20 quid a month or whatever it is these days, entirely up to you. Uh, but you might get caught with your pants down and you know that's on you. Uh, what I will say though also is remember that your insurance premiums both for your vehicles, for your public liability insurance and for your employee liability insurance all of that is tax deductible. So it's not actually you paying for it anyway. Um, you can either give that money to the Queen, uh, give it to the, the, the tax there or you can uh, use it to pay for insurance instead. So. 
That's my advice on public liability insurance, employee liability insurance, and don't forget your vehicle insurance as well. When you get your vehicle insurance, be very specific. If you're bolting tanks in the back of your system, uh, in the back of your van, sorry, if you're bolting in tanks, be very clear you've got these tanks bolted in. If you're setting up hot water propane systems or diesel systems, be very clear. Insurance companies will always, always, always find any possible excuse not to pay out. That's just the nature of their business. That's what they do. Hope you found it useful, guys. Comments, bang them down below. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all that good jazz. You know what to do. And apart from that, um, thanks to uh, Anglis, Angli, tongue tied now, Anglis Saxon. Uh, for asking the question and Ebenezer Odebanjo. Um, I will be back with more not very interesting videos in the near future regarding tax. Talk to you all soon. Ciao for now.